Hello folks, welcome to our talk. Today, we'll be sharing our story in running 10,000 Argo CD applications and sharing our journey in tuning the performance of our Argo CD instance. My name is Giri and this is my colleague, Yudi. Both of us are infra engineers from GoTo Financial. GoTo Financial is a financial arm, part of financial arm, part of uh, GoTo Group, the leading digital ecosystem in Indonesia. We provide various service offerings from ride hailing service using motorcycle, food delivery service, package delivery service, e-commerce platform, and many other services. To start off, um, I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of the state of current of our Kubernetes and Argo CD. We maintain around 50 Kubernetes clusters across AWS, GCP, and private data center in Singapore and Indonesia region. This consists of 700 compute nodes, 15,000 CPUs, 120 terabyte memories, and more than 30,000 pods. This Argo CD dashboard uh, snapshot we took uh, two weeks back. There's an interesting story behind this snapshot. When we were preparing for KubeCon proposal, this talk, a few months back, we were at uh, 7,000 Argo CD apps, and looking at the growth rate of our Argo CD app creation, we predicted uh, today we would reach above 10,000. That's why the title 10,000 Argo CD apps, and today we made it. It's now uh, 11,000 Argo CD applications. These 11,000 applications are coming from 6,000 repositories across 60 different projects. Argo CD watch uh, more than 30 380,000 total objects. On our largest cluster, we run 2,000 applications and Argo CD watch over 40,000 objects. We adopted a simple centralized Argo CD instance model, which is technically a push model, or some of you refer it as hub and spoke model. In hub and spoke model, we have management cluster where we run our single Argo CD instance. This Argo CD instance reads a common Git repository uh, sorry, Git, uh, Git providers, and then using this, uh, the, the, the manifest stored in Git repository, the Argo CD instance push objects across all the clusters that get registered under Argo CD instance. There's a couple of benefits with this simple centralized Argo CD instance. It's very easy to maintain and upgrade because we only need to upgrade one Argo CD instance regularly. It's very easy to integrate with our automation at platform. Internally, we maintain a developer platform that is tightly uh, related to Argo CD instance. So maintaining only one Argo CD version makes it very simple to write our integration logic in the platform. It's very easy to manage centralized RBAC because everything is in one place. And we have a nice single dashboard to view entire Argo CD applications that we have across entire clusters that we manage. Internally, we have a developer platform that became the primary interface of our product engineers. We don't let product engineers to create Argo CD application by themselves. So um, this developer platform leverage uh, the standardized Helm charts that we maintain, the platform team maintains, and the platform generates the manifest, push it to a repository, as well as generate the Argo CD applications. Our developer platform has some sort of grouping mechanism so that sets of Argo CD applications point to the same repository. In some cases, one Argo CD application can also point to one repository. The design uh, in our platform is that one service can contain three to five Argo CD applications. These sets of applications can have different, different life cycle. So for instance, if a user or product engineer create service in, uh, through our developer platform, we will uh, generate one canary application and one stable application. The stable application points to, uh, let's say, a stable container image v1, and then the canary application points to uh, an updated version of image, for instance, v2. These separations of application makes it very easy for us to uh, perform our canary rollout strategy and do promotion to the stable and uh, canary rollback if necessary makes it very easy. Now in our platform, we enabled Istio by default, which means we inject Istio sidecars into every pod that we, main 
that we manage in our clusters. We manage uh, Istio sidecar objects or this uh, Istio uh, sidecar configurations as a separate application. So things like virtual service object, destination rule object are maintained separately in another application. In th this application, we configure the traffic routing, let's say canary 5% or stable 95%. The reason of the separation is, is that we, um, each of the application, we can control it independently. And in some cases, if the service wants to expose domains to public or third party partners, we expose it, we control it, uh, we make configurations through another application, uh, the, the Istio gateway application, which contains gateway object. Another use case that we leverage Argo CD a lot is to maintain our cluster runtime components. In this cluster runtime components, we have standardized components across the 50 clusters that we, that we have. We leverage Argo CD app set or application set and the app of apps pattern on a monorepo. So we only have one repository that manage and configures runtime components for all 50 clusters that we have. In the root of repository, we maintain the, the, the root app set, which generates the parent app of each cluster. So in this example, there's cluster one parent app. Each parent app manages the base cluster configuration as an app, as well as the runtime component as an app set. This base app uh, contains like basic configurations like RBAC or limit range and so on that are standardized across all the 50 clusters that we have. If, um, if we need to apply uh, if we need to customize the cluster beyond what is standardized, we do it through another application, which is a server-side apply patches application. These sets of uh, applications are replicated for the rest of the clusters that we have. And by the way, we also manage Argo CD on Argo CD. <laughs> there are a few challenges with this simple centralized Argo CD instance. First challenge is this Argo CD instance requires connectivity to all the target clusters that it manages. So the consequence of this is we need to establish tunnels or peering connectivity between the management clusters and the entire workload target clusters. If, and sometimes it's not always possible to establish tunnels and peering. We do it through a public network over MTLS. Another challenge is the limitation of Argo CD functionality. First, in Argo CD, we need to maintain unique application name globally. There's no separate, uh, so even, even for different, different projects, the application name cannot be the same. For us, luckily, we always generate application name from the platform, so we, we can have some sort of convention uh, to add, let's say, the cluster name or team name as a suffix or prefix of uh, Argo CD application name, so each team um, in our platform can have uh, conflicting namings. And then uh, the next challenge is this uh, centralized Argo CD instance is a single point of failure. Another challenge that we encountered a lot is performance issues of central Argo CD instance. Along the way, we encountered slow reconciliation problem and sync issues. We look at the uh, Argo CD or QDEP metrics and the app reconcile metrics for this. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are also experiencing this. If you manage uh, more than 1,000 applications, the UI starts loading very, very slowly. For us, it took uh, around one or two minutes to load the entire homepage of Argo CD dashboard. This is quite obvious, and we got a lot of complaints from the product engineers. We face frequent repo server OOM kills. By looking at the cube events, we have an alert for this. We face a high rate of our Git API calls for both LS remote and fetch. We look at Git request metrics for this, and we encountered high repo catch miss in the repo server by looking at the repo server logs. It turns out later on we found out that um, this high repo catch miss is the root cause of why our Argo CD is making very high rate of Git API calls. And in our controller shards, we see imbalanced resource consumption by each shards and, and noisy cluster problem. Next, UD is going to give us walkthrough on our journey in tuning the performance of our Argo CD instance. Thanks, Giri. Now let's talk about our performance tuning journey. In the next 20 minutes, we'll discuss all the config and parameter tunings we have done so far to support and scale our Argo CD uh, for 11K plus apps. As a note, 
The tunings in this presentation are not in chronological order of when we implemented them. Instead, we'll group them into uh, each of their own components. So first, let's take a look at Argo CD components. So we'll use this diagram from the official Argo CD documentation. In Argo CD, there are four layers. First layer, uh, we have the UI layer, uh, which is mainly uh, for user interaction. Here we have the web app uh, and CLI. The web app we uh, use with our web browser and CLI through, uh, allows us to interact with Argo CD through the terminal. Next, we have the application layer, uh, which consists of uh, the API server, or we also call it Argo CD server. Uh, it serves API requests from the UI layer. And then uh, next, we have the core uh, layer. Uh, these components are the main uh, Argo CD functionality components. Here, we have app controller, app set controller, and repo server. The app controller uh, mainly uh, reconciles and uh, synchronizes Kubernetes objects uh, according to their state in the repo. And then we have app set controller, which is to generate applications based on templates. And then uh, we have the repo server, which receives manifest generation requests from the Argo CD server and the AMP controller. And then uh, next we have the infra layer. Uh, Argo CD depends on these components uh, for its functionality. We have Redis for caching, Cube API to uh, watch and uh, apply Cube objects, and Git, Helm, or customized repos, and also DEX for uh, authentication. Okay, now let's uh, start first with Argo CD Server. So as Giri mentioned before, uh, we had very slow UI load. Uh, so it could take anywhere between 15 seconds to two minutes for us to load the, the Argo CD homepage, uh, depending on our network connection. So as a solution, we enabled JZIP compression feature uh, in Argo CD Server. So uh, what we need is to set this environment variable to true. So uh, in our case, it improved load time by, uh, in, in average by 5x and uh, data size to seven times smaller. Next, uh, still about Argo CD Server. And it's actually not a tune, but uh, more of a tip for us, the Argo CD UI users. We, we can actually use selectors to filter out only the applications we want to see using uh, their label values, their projects, or their namespaces. Uh, and in this example, we select one project uh, in one namespace, and we only show a fraction of the, the total apps that we have, uh, which under uh, our selectors here. So uh, one great thing is that the selectors are saved the next time we load our Argo CD UI, which is quite handy. Next, uh, it's about Kubernetes CPU limits. So this is actually not specific to Argo CD, uh, but more of a Kubernetes mechanism. And it can be applied to other use cases uh, outside Kube, uh, Argo CD. So the problem is that we noticed and uh, through our monitoring uh, system, that all our Argo CD components got throttled, uh, CPU throttled, uh, and uh, it kind of slow, had an impact to our reconciliation uh, latency. So uh, in K Kubernetes, CPU requests and limits are implemented using C groups, uh, which uses the CFS or completely fair scheduler from the Linux kernel. So uh, CFS could guarantee or could throttle container CPU depending on the proportion uh, of the container CPU shares or quota in, in the node. We, we actually don't uh, really have much time to talk about, uh, more about uh, this mechanism, but if anyone is interested to have a uh, deeper look, we attach some references. So uh, as a solution to the CPU throttling, we lifted our Kubernetes limits. Uh, we decided to leave it. And uh, our app controller and uh, other components uh, did not go throttle, uh, went throttle anymore. Next, uh, we move to the repo server. 
So uh, Giri mentioned about how I'm killed. Uh, happened to our repo server. So it happened very frequently back then. So as a solution, we increase the replicas and uh, use HPA so that the repo server pods automatically scales with its memory usage. So uh, with this, we distribute more requests uh, to into more pods. So each pod actually get uh, less uh, manifest generation request uh, from the server and app controller, uh, translating into less memory usage. Or alternatively, we can also use the uh, parallelism limit flag on uh, the repo server to control how many manifest generation requests that can be served uh, in parallel to help avoid uh, the OM kills. However, there's one thread of, uh, of this approach is that the throughput of manifest generation will also be uh, lower as we limit its parallelism. Next, uh, so the Argo CD server and app controller uh, talks to repo server, right? They are the clients of the repo server. They uh, talk to repo server for manifest generation and uh, they have timeout configurations. So as we uh, grow, we started seeing uh, those clients' timeout errors in our logs. Uh, we see them when uh, we sync and refresh apps. So as a solution, we increased uh, the configuration in both the Argo CD server and the app controller. One thing to note is that we really need to set on both uh, components because I've seen people only setting it on uh, app controller and uh, missing the server. So they still see uh, the timeout errors. Next, uh, continuing on repo server again. Uh, so from our repo server metrics, uh, Git metrics, we consistently saw uh, high, very high Git fetch requests. So Argo CD uh, caches generated manifest uh, in Redis and they uh, have 24 hours expiry by default. So in uh, cases when, when remote files change often, even though the repository tag hasn't changed. Uh, for example, when we do git push force or when we update a home chart with the same version, uh, shorter expiry uh, time uh, will be more desirable uh, to pick up those updates uh, quicker, uh, faster than 24 hours. But in our use case, uh, our Helm uh, customized and Git remote uh, references are already hermetic. So they, uh, we use the tag and we don't force push or uh, force update to a tag. So uh, we can actually use a higher uh, value for uh, the expiry time. We can do it by setting this uh, environment variable. And after uh, extending our expiry time, we uh, immediately saw uh, dramatic drop in our git request, uh, git fetch request from the repo server. Next, uh, we move on to monorepo. So, so we mentioned that we use uh, apps of apps pattern and the uh, application set uh, in our monorepo. We additionally we also use the multi sources apps feature uh, of Argo CD, which allows us to have uh, these uh, multiple features. Uh, when defining an app. So uh, when we implemented this, right after we immediately saw very high git fetch and git ls remote requests uh, as seen in uh, the two screenshots here. So uh, we investigated it and uh, found that it's potentially a bug in Argo CD. So we implemented an, an undocumented workaround for this, which is, uh, can be accessed in details in this GitHub issue. And uh, our git fetch request dropped dram dramatically after that, uh, which is shown in uh, the right uh, screenshot. But we are still seeing high uh, LS remote requests. Uh, so we think this uh, is still an open issue. So if anyone is interested, uh, please uh, check out the GitHub issue. Still about monorepo. Uh, so uh, we usually might want to use a webhook from our uh, repository 
to notify Argo CD, so Argo CD can pick up uh, updates uh, faster uh, every time we commit. In a monorepo, uh, Argo CD webhook server may refresh all applications when it receives uh, a webhook, even though uh, the news change uh, might not have any relation to uh, all those applications at all. Uh, it could be just a subset uh, of the parts that we really care of, but uh, the webhook will uh, refresh anyway all the apps. In the refresh process, uh, Argo CD invalidates the cache for all apps and calls Kubernetes API to annotate all application objects with a special annotation for Argo CD refresh. And uh, this operation is a network bound uh, process which may slow the update process overall, especially uh, when we start having uh, more than 1,000 apps. So uh, uh, we can actually filter out or uh, define specific paths when we receive a webhook so that Argo CD will only refresh uh, applications that are changed uh, in specific paths. We can use uh, this special annotation called manifest generate paths and uh, we define the specific paths here. After using this, we sped up our uh, refresh process after uh, getting a webhook request. Next, let's move to the app controller. So one of the first uh, problems that we had with app controller is about uh, work queue. So uh, our app controller work queue depth uh, started to pile up and it did not go down at all. So uh, we investigated and we decided to increase the number of operation processes and status processors uh, in app controller because uh, there are the number of concurrent uh, reconciliation and synchronization that can be uh, happening uh, concurrently at one time. So we can use these parameters uh, to tune them and in our case we use these numbers. One rule of thumb we can use uh, for uh, configuring these values is that for every 1,000 applications, we use 50 status processors and 25 operation processors. Next, uh, about scaling. So uh, the app controller can actually be scaled uh, into multiple shards. So it's horizontally shardable. And uh, the sharding algorithm in Argo CD is uh, on the cluster level. So different set of clusters will be assigned and uh, will be served by different shards. So to uh, scale our, the app controller, we need to increase the replicas uh, of the stateful set of app controller. And uh, we also need to set this uh, environment variable Argo CD controller replicas uh, with the, the same value. And after implementing this, we started to distribute uh, into more Argo CD pods. After implementing the uh, sharding, we noticed uneven shards, uh, uneven shard CPU usages. Some shards uh, has higher CPU usage and some has significantly lower uh, compared to others. So uh, as previously mentioned, Argo CD shards per cluster, not uh, on the app level. So uh, large clusters could be hosted uh, by the same shard. Likewise, smaller clusters could also be uh, hosted by the same shard as well, uh, resulting in the uneven uh, CPU usages. The new round robin sharding algorithm uh, that's just available recently uh, might not help much either for our use case here because there's still chance that large clusters could get into the same shard when uh, Argo CD round robins uh, the clusters into the shards. So we decided to do manual, uh, a manual shard allocation instead to uh, fine tune the, our shard resources. To do this, we can use the cluster secret, uh, which is uh, used by Argo CD. And uh, we add a new field called shard and uh, we put the shard number uh, into the cluster secret. And after uh, implementing it, we saw more even CPU usages across all our shards. 
So perhaps one discussion about uh, sharding on Argo CD. Uh, sharding on the application level, uh, we think would be a really great feature and uh, might be a good uh, solution for the uh, noisy cluster problem we have here. There's an open discussion about this uh, on GitHub. Uh, if anyone is, is interested, please check it out. Next, uh, even after all the app controller tuning we did, we still uh, saw very high app controller CPU usages. Uh, and what we thought was, uh, I think we think was slow reconciles. So Argo CD, uh, the app controller, watches all field changes of track objects. And uh, if any field changes and uh, differs to the manifest that's in the cache, Argo CD will uh, start refreshing the apps. Uh, those objects are Kubernetes objects, which uh, maybe as we know, Kubernetes fields could get very concise and some fields might get frequently updated. Uh, even, even though those fields uh, are fields that we, we don't really need for Argo CD to reconcile. So we actually only need the fields that we have in our uh, repositories, uh, in our manifest, right? Those fields, uh, uh, for ex example, are the uh, status fields or the resource generation field or also the resource version uh, field. So in Argo CD, uh, there's this new, uh, fairly new feature uh, called ignore resource updates, uh, which was uh, only available since V2.8 uh, and ignore differences features. We can use these features to filter out uh, the fields we don't really need uh, for Argo CD to uh, do that uh, reconciliation process. Uh, or we can call them high churn objects. Uh, so in our uh, case here, we use uh, this uh, configuration. Uh, I think it's a bit small, but I hope uh, you can see it. Uh, for example, the, uh, we ignore HPA annotations, uh, which frequently updates. We also ignore some replica set uh, annotations. We ignore endpoint slice, uh, which could get uh, very noisy. And uh, we also ignore the whole status field, uh, status field uh, of our uh, of our Kubernetes objects. One thing to note about status is that uh, if you have uh, custom controllers, your custom controller might uh, want to use some fields in the status field. So uh, you might want to specify a more explicit uh, parts here uh, you want to ignore. In our case, we can uh, just ignore the status fields. And upon uh, implementing this, our uh, CPU usage uh, dropped dramatically, almost by half. And for one uh, fairly simple feature, I think this was a really great feature. And uh, shout out to the contributors and maintainers for making this feature happen. Next, uh, last but not least, the uh, bot API client. So our in-house developer platform implements Argo CD API client library. And as we scale, we started seeing HTTP2 go away errors from our platform. So we investigated, found, uh, and fixed a bug in the API client library when using uh, gRPC web mode, uh, which is shown in this uh, GitHub issue. We uh, fixed that error. Uh, and also, actually for Argo CD CLI, it may fall back to gRPC web mode, even though the flag is not uh, specified. So you might want to check your uh, .config slash Argo CD slash config file to see if there's any uh, configuration defined there. Or alternatively, we can just use the native gRPC because this bug only uh, affects uh, gRPC web mode. Okay, that's all the improvements. Uh, Sorry, the tuning that we can share. And we do have uh, more f improvements to Argo CD that we look forward to, which will be uh, presented by Giri. So we explored uh, different alternatives to our centralized Argo CD setup. The first alternative we look up to is uh, the decentralized Argo CD model. Instead of a centralized model, uh, this is a pool model where each cluster 
uh, installs its own Argo CD instance. So if we have 50 different clusters, there will be 50 uh, different Argo CD instances responsible to reconcile in its own local cluster. There are a couple of benefits which, we, uh, which uh, wins against the centralized Argo CD. The first benefit is the application control workloads get distributed across the clusters nicely. So it's easy to scale with this uh, model. And then second benefit, the Argo CD instance doesn't need to have access to all the Kubernetes API servers that we have in the infrastructure. So this model has a better security posture than the centralized model. However, there are many <laughs> challenges that we don't like. Um, instead of maintaining one instance, we now need to maintain and upgrade 50 different Argo CD instances. For us, small team of platform engineers, we already regularly upgrade 50 clusters, 50 Istio uh, components, and if we implement this, we need to add more works to our, our small team. And our platform, if we implement this, we need to maintain multiple Argo CD client versions and know in order to talk to which cluster, we need to uh, use different Argo CD client versions. It makes unnecessary complexity in our platform logic. And we no longer have centralized dashboard to control and view uh, Argo CD applications in a certain cluster. We need to open different dashboards. We would be having 50 different Argo CD dashboards. And anyway, if the cluster gets large, uh, we still require tuning of that particular Argo CD instance. Another alternative that we saw was an um, agent-based Argo CD or a hybrid model between push and pull that we saw in Acuity platform. In this hybrid model, each of the cluster still has Argo CD instance, but there's a central Argo CD control plane uh, which oversees uh, the entire application states across the clusters and the dashboard is still centralized. We really hope this model gets uh, contributed upstream <laughs> in the community. We've seen a couple of work in progress in the community. Like the first uh, pull request got merged a couple of months back. It enables optional pull mechanism for application set. With this PR, um, the application set can generate application objects to a remote cluster and then let the remote cluster reconcile on the application object that they belong locally in the cluster. Now, second, uh, second feature is still an open issue in GitHub. It's, uh, it's an effort to, to, to implement centralized UI for multiple Argo CD instances. And what we are also excited about is the Argo CD UI improvement. There is an open issue right now to support server-side pagination on the Argo CD dashboard, which will significantly uh, boost up Argo CD uh, load page in, in the home page. And this is already on Acuity, and they plan it to bring it upstream. I hope soon it will be available upstream. We are heavily inspired by um, TikTok and Adobe's uh, journey in managing their thousands of Argo CD applications, and we learn a lot uh, from uh, Argo CD best practices uh, uh, from Alex, and also um, the amazing Argo CD documentation that provides us clear guidance on the performance tuning uh, journey. Thank you for your time. We are now happy to take questions. We still have uh, two more minutes, and please scan the QR here to give us feedback. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I wanted to ask, how fast and easy is it to short up and down on the application server? So, sorry, I didn't get it. How fast is that? How easy and how easy and um, fast is it to short up and or down on the application server? How easy is it to short up or down? Right. Um, you were showing you had four application servers running. Ah, okay. Shorted oh, out. Controller shards. The controller shards, right? Yeah. Okay. It's very easy. Okay. You can, you can ah, yeah. Uh, actually, it's a simple, just a simple uh, replica uh, change. And to change the environment variable we uh, shown in the uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. So Argo CD app controller is actually pretty stateless. Uh, it can build up its own uh, state again uh, from scratch. So uh, we might perhaps see a uh, little bit of slow reconciles right after we shut up or down uh, the app controller, but uh, it's like just two to, to three minutes uh, in our experience. I hope that uh, answers your question. 
Hi, uh, I have a question about the centralized Argo CD maintenance. So what type of guardrails do you have when migrating from one Argo CD version to another? Say for suppose, uh, recently we did a small migration from 2.7 to 2.8 and we found the performance uh, issues and we rolled it back. And uh, in, ca in case of centralized Argo CD, if something what breaks, uh, the whole what deployment system might break. So what kind of guardrails did you uh, take when you are maintaining this? Okay, uh, upgrading Argo CD. Uh, 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 actually, each Argo CD version could have their own uh, special treatment we need to uh, tackle. So they are actually uh, like described pretty clearly uh, in each upgrade uh, documents. For example, I think from 2.7 to 2.8, we had a pretty smooth uh, upgrade. And I think it was 2.5 to 2.6, uh, right? Where mm -hmm. we had uh, some major changes and we needed to... Uh, so it depends on the, the versions. But generally, uh, it's not that operationally intensive. Uh, and uh, they have pretty clear guidance for us to do. All right, I think uh, we are running out of, out of time. Uh, if okay. you still have questions, let's do it in the hallway. Yeah. Thank you.